Hi, today I'm going to go over the installation of the Idle Stopper V2 module. Uh, this install isn't too bad. Uh, the worst part is removing this wireless charging pad, if you have one. If you don't, there will be just a rubber mat that lifts up here and there will be two screws underneath. But for this model, we're going to need to remove this wireless charging pad to access the two screws that are underneath it. Uh, there is a couple of slots in the charging pad itself that I can show you here. There is a slot right down here right here and one on the other side and that is the place where you're going to be putting your flathead screwdriver into i'm going to show you here we do that so you're going to want to lay down a towel or something uh, you can use a plastic pry tool like this or you can use a screwdriver just a flathead tip screwdriver uh, you're going to lay the rag in between the console and the screwdriver so you don't scratch up this trim on here um, so basically just lay the rag down and then you're going to stick that flathead of screwdriver in that tab and just pop in the backward and upward direction. Uh, we're going to do that for both sides and that's going to loosen this wireless charging pad up to where we can just lift it up and out. Uh, there is one connector on the bottom so we're just going to go ahead and unplug that and move that out of the way. Next thing we're going to do is remove the two screws that are underneath. There's one on this side and one on that side. So we'll go ahead and do that right now. All right, so now that we've got our screws out, the next thing we need to remove is this shifter panel. And you can grab underneath on the bottom side here and pull upward, or you can use a trim tool and go in the sides on the bottom here where there's a crease. Uh, it's just easier just to reach down here and pull up on the panel. It's pretty easy to lift up. Uh, the whole thing will detach and it will come up and over like this. All right, now that we've got our console out of the way, the next thing we're going to be attacking is the power socket connector. It is a black two pin connector at the bottom of this hole. Uh, it's to the right of my light in the video. It has the brown wire and a black wire, and it is also positioned upside down. So if you want to get a good reference on how to detach it, there is a little tab just like on most of the other connectors that need to be pushed in. On this one, it's this top tab here. Uh, this needs to be pushed in while you're releasing it. It's also facing upside down, so it's looking like this when you go into it. So the tab is on the underside, so you'll have to push the tab in while you wiggle it off. Uh, I would also recommend putting a towel or something over the edges of this because sometimes they can get rather sharp with the freshly cut metal. So I'm going to put this down in here and reach my hand down here and get this connector out. Okay, I've got the connector off and it's in my hand here. So now we can take our idle stopper module and plug in the black connectors. Um, this black connector will run all the way to the bottom and plug into the power socket. And then this T-shaped connector here will plug into the factory wiring. I try and get a good video, but since it's down in the hole, it's kind of hard to see. All right, so once again, this is the factory wire connector here. And we're going to take our T-shape and plug it in. It's it only goes in one way. Uh, you can't put it in backwards. The T-shape only fits in the T-connector. So it's going to come together and it's going to look like this when it's all together. There will be a small gap in between and we're going to cover that with the black foam strip that's in the package with your idle stopper. This uh, little black strip felt here. So we'll just peel off the backing of this. And what we're going to do is we're going to take it and we're going to wrap it around this connection to cover that gap that's in there. All right, so once your connection is wrapped, it should look like this. And then we can move on to the next connector. And this one is going to plug into the power socket itself. So we're going to run that down through this hole and plug it into the power socket itself. Okay, so when everything's connected, the idle stopper, one side should be down on the power outlet itself, and the other one should be onto the factory wiring. All right, so after we've got the bottom done, we can take our shifter panel and go to the bottom of the idle stop off switch here. We're going to remove this white connector. We're going to push this little tab in and pull out on the connector. 
Uh, our idle stopper has two white connectors on it as well. Uh, the module connector will plug into the idle stop off switch on one side, and then the other side will plug directly into the other connector. And then what you're going to want to do is take the zip tie that's included and zip tie it up to this harness so it doesn't move around. Or you can use the included foam square to mount it somewhere else or up in any other direction. Uh, it's really up to you on your preference. But uh, for this video purposes, I'm not going to fully clip it into this vehicle. Uh, the only thing left we have remaining is to put this all back together. So now that we've got our idle stopper module installed, we can go ahead and put this panel back in here. And it's just going to rest back into its place and then clip straight back down. And then the next thing we're going to do is put our two screws back in on both sides. And then last, we will grab our charging pad here and plug it in on the bottom. And we'll slide that back in backside first and then clip it back down into place. All right, so now that we've got the console and everything back together, we can go ahead and start the vehicle up and test it out. It should take about five to seven seconds and the auto idle stop off light should illuminate down here on the bottom left of the gauge. There it is right there, just a message showing that it was disabled. Uh, you can reach back down at any time and turn the system back on if you'd like or off again uh, if you do turn it on and leave it on uh, and then you shut the vehicle off it will still automatically revert to being in the off state at startup so once again the idle stopper will just turn it off automatically for you at each startup so you don't have to and there is the light right there confirming that the idle stop is disabled so we are fully finished here and thanks for watching